everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I have got a really cool little tutorial for you today. Very easy, very simple to do, and it's how to make curve lettering in Brilliance. I thought I would show you how I did this. I just made this little shirt for a little boy that stays across the uh, way from us down at the coast, down in Port O'Connor, Texas, and this is a red fish and I curved Port O'Connor, Texas underneath. Oh, I guess I need to trim my jump threads. I wanted to show you how easy it is to do this. And I will put a link to Embrilliance software down below, get into showing you in Embrilliance how exactly I did this. We'll do a little screen capture on, on that process. Very, very simple to do. Thank you to all my new subscribers for joining me. I hope you, uh, you enjoy this video. And if you do, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel a lot. So let me show you how I did this. From the Embrilliance homepage, you can set your hoop by coming up here to Edit and Preferences. Scroll down to Preferences. And I was using the 5x7 multi-needle. I created that so that it is 7x5 versus 5x7. And I am using PES format you can click here and choose whatever format that your machine uses and your hoops for that particular machine will come up. And as you can see, you can also customize your hoops based on uh, whatever hoop, if it's not in here, you can certainly put one in there that, that works for what you need. I'm gonna click okay. And you can tell the size hoop you have down here at the bottom. It says hoop. It's 7 and 1 16th by 5 and 1 8th. And it's very simple to import designs into Embrilliance. You come down to your folder on your taskbar. You can tell I was playing with my videos. And I'm going to come to embroidery in my quick access panel. And the fish is in Keith's folder. He likes this fish there. I find the red fish and just click on it and drag it into the hoop. There we go. Minimize. The last time my husband used this, he put it in a 4x4 four four hoop. So I'm going to change my hoop back to the 5x7 multi-needle apply. There we go. And I want to turn this just a little bit, so I'm going to click on it and I'm going to come up here to the little blue circle that is up in the corner. I'm going to rotate the fish just a little bit, kind of like that. Now I need to add some lettering. To add lettering, you come up to the icon menu and click the A. And then you can see over here in the properties, you will have a, the ability to change the text. If it looks like this and you see that right away, just click on the letters tab and then they'll pop up. And you can see your letters are ready to be uh, stitched right here. So instead of ABC, I am going to just type Port O Connor comma T-E-X-A-S and hit enter. Now the block font is an excellent font. It's, it comes default with Embrilliance and it has a full set of punctuation. So it did have the apostrophe and it had the comma. A lot of them won't. So a lot of the fonts don't. So this is a real good one to use if you need to have punctuation in your uh, words at all. Now I want to make this curve and so I'm going to, over here in the properties, there's three lines right here in a block. There's a straight line, and here's a circle. I'm going to click the circle. And then right here, there is the radius. And you can change the radius. By default, the radius is going to curve upward. So if you scroll this around, you can see the letters are curving and moving. Well, I want the letters to scroll under, I want them curved under the fish. So all you have to do is check this little box right here that says place on bottom, and it turns it. That's great. Now, if you grab a letter in the green box, you're gonna move just that letter. But if you grab it on the thread text, it'll move the whole thing. Okay, 
Now, I'm not entirely sure that those are aligned properly. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure they're not. So I'm going to make sure that I have my letters are highlighted. I'm going to hold down my control key and click on the fish to get them both highlighted. See, now you can tell, or you can do control A to select all. And I'm going to come up here into this menu. This right here centers in the hoop. We don't want to do that just yet. First thing we want to do is align both objects with each other. And by objects, I mean object number one over here in the right. Look in the objects panel. Object number one is the fish, and it has five different elements to it, five different stitch thread changes, and object number two is the letters. So I want to make sure that both objects are selected, and I'm going to come up here, this little icon that is below the center in the hoop, I'm going to click it, and we have the Align and Distribute panel. Now, you can see that these little images right here are one on top of the other. So you can align left, align center, or align right. And then over here, these little images are aligned side by side horizontally. So you can align to the top, center, and align to the bottom. But I'm going to align center and then click Apply. That move that fish just a little bit. I'm going to click close, and now I want to center it all in the hoop. And I'm just going to click this button up here. It looks like a little box with four arrows pointing it all toward the middle. There we go. That's it. I'm done. I'm ready to stitch this out. So I'm just going to go File, Save Stitch File As, and if you have a USB, which I don't have one in there right now, but you would scroll down to your USB and save it to your USB drive and then take it to your machine. I'm just going to click Cancel. That's how easy it is to create curve lettering in Embrilliance Essentials. So here's my first stitch out on Spanky on my channel. And I am doing a, a little t-shirt for a little boy that stays across the street from us in Port O'Connor and you can see I am using the snowman so I haven't I've hooped it approximately where I think it's gonna go it may or may not be exact center that's the beauty of the snowman so the interface this is the brother PR 1055 X entrepreneur pro brand new from brother those of you that have a luminaire or a Solaris will notice that the screen looks very very much like your screen on uh, your machines. Let me get you in close so you can see what I'm going to do here. It lets you personalize your pictures on there. That's my son and his wife up in Colorado Springs and it's going to rotate through. There's uh, one of my viewers said Lula Bell likes to watch me on her TV so I put that on there. I thought that was so cute. <laughs> we'll go through these. I'll let you guys see my pictures. There is my block that was part of Moda's 2020 Countdown to Summer. And that's the Moda quilt. And there's my sweet baby girl Harley with her baby outside. And what's next? It only gives you five. Nope, that's it. Okay. You guys didn't want to see that. I have it. Uh, the design is here on my Power Tools with Thread USB stick. And it is a red fish with Port O'Connor under it. Let's see. There it is. This is the one that I just saved. Yeah, I'm going to need to rotate that. So I'm going to hit set. And at this menu, this is where you can do any of the rotation that you want at all. I'm going to rotate and I'm going to go 90 degrees this way and tell it OK. And that's all the editing that I want to do. Here is where you can do size, rotate, mirror, all of that. Uh, create applique, do stippling, very, very much like what's on the Luminaire. So I'm going to hit end edit because I'm not going to do anything else with it. Now right here is where you can continue to rotate if you decide you want to do that. Here is your snowman icon and this button right here it has three spools of thread and this is really important because I'm going to tell the machine what threads are to be stitched when and what you do is you just hit the button 
So you get a little picture right here of what that stitch out is going to be. This is stitch number one and I want it to be white. And white on my machine is color number six. So I'm gonna hit number six and watch the one change to a six. Okay, I'll go down to number two. I think that's going to be red, the wine red, and that's color number one. And then the next one, that is black, and on my machine, black is color number five. And the next one is the orange gold, so that is color number two, thread spool number two. There is the outline, and that is going to be done in black, and that's already number five, so that's fine. And then number six is the lettering, and I want the lettering to be in that wine red as well, and that is color number one. So you have to tell the machine ahead of time what color thread to use based on where the color spools are on the machine. I'm going to tell it okay. I think it's happy. Now we're going to touch the snowman button and it's going to uh, see if it can find it and um, center the design on the snowman. Let's see if I tell it okay. The camera is right under here. And you can see it's turning red on the screen. It's, it says remove the embroidery positioning mark. It got it. So I'm going to tell it okay. Let me move, remove the mark. Tell it okay. And we are ready to go. Now I'm just going to touch embroidery. I'm going to hit the lock button. And it's ready to go. I have a piece of cutaway stabilizer under this. It's going to take 20 minutes to stitch out. Not a single problem. Absolutely fabulous. Tell it okay. Look at that. No puckers, no ripples. Perfect. So that was a lot of fun. I am going to turn the shirt inside out and then you want to cut away. That's why they call it cut away. And that's a big difference between using tear away and cut away. Cutaway has a heavier fiber to it that really gives the stability that a, this was a very dense stitch out. And so you really do need that. Uh, I don't think you would be as happy uh, with tear away. So what I'm gonna do now is trim the excess away and you want to have your project facing you so you can keep an eye where your scissors are going and I use the duckbill scissors and it just, you know, you should almost be able to slide those scissors right around your project. 
and I I usually go oh quarter of an inch ish you know kind of I don't get real crazy about it sorry my dog's taking a drink I don't feel like editing this out <laughs> I've been doing this a lot today so now once you get once you get the back got it cut away don't cut away your knots but the little tails that are sticking up go ahead and trim those off it makes a more professional finish now one of the things that I do and I would say especially with children's clothing but anybody's clothing nobody wants this uh, these threads can feel itchy against your skin sulky makes a product called tender touch <clears throat> I recommend you use that or if you don't have any of that there is a Pellon product that is used as an interfacing in garment sewing and it is called it is called EK 130 easy knit EK 130 let me show you if you can see it can you see it it's kind of translucent EK 130 easy knit I got this at Walmart and it is, uh, it's a very, very lightweight iron-on interfacing. Harley, my dog, y'all, she barks because she's happy. You can tell she's not barking at anything. She's just making noise to make noise. See, I know there's nothing really to be barking at over there because the other dog is not at it as well. Can you believe her? She's done. She's coming in. Did you give them what for? <laughs> Silly girl. Okay. This stuff, the EK-130, I got two yards of it at Walmart for $3.94. Two yards at Walmart. Now, the EK-130, it has a bumpy side that it has the glue on it, and the other side is silky, silky soft. And what I like to do is fold it into quarters and then you're going to round the corners. And that's just kind of a trick to keep those edges from coming up during the wash. If, if there's not a little corner to pull, uh, it has a tendency to stay on much better. So I've rounded the corners. I just folded it into quarters, rounded the corners, okay? And that's big enough. It's going to fit over the entire design and it will last for the life of the garment so I'm gonna go iron this on and I'll be right back okay it's all done it's super soft very soft and it's not gonna bother anybody you know their skin will be nice no oh, that's a good-looking shirt <laughs> How about that? you tell me what little boy would not want to be wearing this his name is Wes. He's going to get it. I think it's awesome. He'll love it. I need to make one for his sister, I guess. I can put Porter Connor in pink. Her dad's a big, big fisherman. They've got several boats down there. So, All right, you guys. Well, that's all I had to talk to you about on this video. I'm making videos like crazy since Keith's down there fishing. I will talk to you soon. Go says something. Bye.